And welcome to another episode of College Football Time with Avery Miguel. I am Miguel. This is my partner, Avery. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you out there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it with your family and friends. Not too many people can be home for the holidays. We have a lot of deaths going on, a lot of people grieving. So um, as for us who are in freedom, who are alive, we are blessed in so many ways. So we got to be grateful and thankful that we're still breathing and we have a home and we have all these other things. So I just want to start off the show with that. Now, let's get to the fun part. Michigan versus Ohio State. Avery, both teams are 11-0. And this is the second time in their series history that they're both 11-0. They they're going up against each other. It's the number two scoring offense versus the number two scoring defense. I don't like, I mean, if you're Ohio State, you like your chances coming into this game. Number one, you're playing at home. And number two, um, unfortunately for Blake Corum, you know, we don't know what we're going to get from him uh, for tomorrow. So Ohio State, you know, with Henderson and Williams, they have their own issues as well. But Blake Corum is the bigger story here. What's going to happen with him? Um, J.J. McCarthy, he's had some great games. Um, Last week in the fourth quarter, he had a terrific performance at the comeback. But you like we don't know what to get from him because in the last few games we saw what what happened with him. So um, I feel that in order for Michigan to have a chance in this game, the running game has to be on point. In order for and they also have to some way slow down Ohio State's offense. For Ohio State, in order for them to win, it's gonna come down to two things the running game, and make Michigan throw the ball. If you can get to to do those two things, then I feel that Ohio State will come out with a victory. I'm picking Ohio State to win. I feel like they're a better team than last year. I feel that this is their moment. This is their revenge game from losing by 15 points last, last year against Michigan. So that's just my take. What do you have to say, Avery? I I agree with you, Miguel. I think it's going to be an interesting game. There are a lot of different dynamics going on. Since 1897, the Ohio State Buckeyes and Michigan Wolverines have played each other 117 times. This is one of the longest, quote unquote, rivalries in college football. Michigan actually leads this series 59 to 51. They've had six ties in the entire uh, history of their rivalry. But it's not just how these players are gonna play the game. Playing in the horseshoe is tough as it is, but with both teams being undefeated, there is a lot more at stake. You have the college football playoff, you have Ohio State at number two, Michigan at number three, and Everything can come down to which one of these teams is going to make that playoff. And you're right, J.J. McCarthy, he's what I think is, he's been a quiet quarterback this season. With only two interceptions, but he's only had like 14 touchdowns, he's making plays when he needs to, but he's also making costly mistakes. With both teams, you have Ohio State that scores more points, you have uh, Michigan, but they give them a total yards, nearly 500. But when it comes to allowing, you have Michigan, whose rush defense barely allows a hundred, less than 100 yards. So I think this can be a close game. I want it to be a close game. But you're right. Ohio State has more going for it right now. Everything is clicking for them. I did one of my informative interviews over the weekend and the person who I was interviewing said, you have 11 players on one side of the ball, 11 players on the other side of the ball. And at any given time, when everything works, you can have a great football game against a team that people do not expect you to win. 
Case in point, look at the tech, look at the Tennessee South Carolina game. That was a game where everyone expected Tennessee to win, but South Carolina just had everything going for them. So whatever their coach said, whatever clicked for that team, that needs to happen tomorrow. So whatever coach Harbaugh is going to say to his players, not just the fact that they're on the road, not just the fact that they're playing the Ohio State Buckeyes, something needs to click for them in order for it to work. I want this game to be close, but I'm going to agree with you, Miguel. I see Ohio State winning this, but I do see it hopefully being close. I have Ohio State 25-23, and it's going to keep Ohio State in the college playoff and Michigan probably being the outside looking in. Yeah, I feel that the loser of this game, and I don't like saying that word because both of these teams have just been playing so great. Um, I feel that the loser will need help from USC or these other teams in order for them to make the playoffs. Um, but I have Ohio State winning 34 to 24. Like you, I wish it could be close, but something is just telling me that the most I'll go is 10 points um, in favor of Ohio State. But again, this is college football we're talking about. We don't know who's going to step up. It might be on oh, somebody from Michigan. If Michigan wins, something tells me it will come down to three things. Either J.J. McCarthy will have the game of his college career Blake Corum will, f- will have an inspiration type game or someone that we least expect is going to um, lift this team to victory. So, so we, we don't know. We don't know. That's what makes this game so exciting because you have both teams. They're undefeated. But me, I'm the type of person that I want to see both teams at full strength. So let's say Blake Corum doesn't go tomorrow or he's not 100%. Everybody's going to look at it like that's an asterisk on Ohio State because they didn't have their best guy on the other side. So, and that's something I don't want to, I don't want that for Ohio State, but let's see what happens. Um, Hopefully the game is very interesting because I hate lopsided games and this game cannot be lopsided. So let's just hope that it, it comes down to two or three points. I hope I'm proven wrong. I agree with you, Miguel. When you have two of the best teams in college football, and I remember you telling me you want the best to beat the best. And I've kind of taken that mentality. I think us as Americans, we do love that underdog. But considering both teams are the best right now, being in the top four, we expect them to play the best. And I believe you're right. If if Coram doesn't go tomorrow and Ohio State wins, it can be an asterisk because Michigan was not at full strength, especially if the victory ends up being lopsided. But both teams are going to bring it, whether they're at full strength, maybe they're missing key components. I also agree. It could be down to one play, one player. I see Marvin Harrison Jr. having a great game considering he has been stellar this season. I agree. And and considering Michigan won last year, especially because you had more seniors coming back just for the sake of beating Ohio State, it's going to be a great game. I think with the playoff implications, I think it's going to be a hard-hitting game. I think they're going to bring, both teams are going to bring everything and we are going to be in a treat at noon. And that's kind of the best thing. This is a great game that's going to start off college football Saturday at at high noon. What better way to start Saturday than with the Ohio State Buccaneers versus Ohio State Buckeyes versus the Michigan Wolverines. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great time. Amen. And I I love, I love the fact that it's at noon. 
because to be honest, I love college football Saturdays, but there's just something by the time it gets 7 and 8 p.m., I'm already drained and I'm trying to keep my focus. But if it's 12 or 3 o'clock, forget about it. And the fact that it's 12, oof, hallelujah, hallelujah. 12 high noon, let's go, let's go. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. 